Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make an extremely affordable PLC or RTU out of an Arduino uh, Duomo Lenovo or Uno. Um, for about 40 bucks you can have some pretty decent features. So let's check this out. Alright, so I have everything apart here. I'm going to put it together and show you what I'm doing here. This um, Arduino is programmed with a Modbus RTU protocol in there. So um, if you don't know Modbus RTU is a um, standard protocol, communication protocol, and it's been around for over 30 years. So, you know, since it's been around that long, it is kind of old and clunky. However, it is extremely reliable and it's uh, compatible with thousands or tens of thousands of industrial uh, pieces of equipment out there. So, 15 or 20 bucks for an Arduino and some screw terminals, which are nice, especially if you want to have this in a permanent installation. You don't want these little jumper pins to just fall out. So, you can get these for about uh, 10 dollars I think and then of course I want to communicate with this thing um, I've chosen RS232 so basically I'm gonna do Modbus RTU over RS232 so Modbus RTU is the protocol RS232 is the standard of <coughs> voltage levels so this chip is only gonna output you know 3.3 volts and that's fine if you're going a few inches or a foot to another microcontroller. However, if you want to go hundreds of feet or thousands of feet, you have to have a more robust uh, voltage level. So that's where RS-232 comes in. Old computers always had a 9-pin RS-232 serial port. So um, this is great for up to about 50 feet. Obviously, I'm connecting it to my computer. Um, you can get shields for RS-485 if you like to um, go up to a thousand or two thousand feet. Uh, 232 or 45 is definitely related to each other. You can buy a little converter. There's a little chip here to convert from 232 to 485 levels. Now uh, RS-232 you can split it to multiple devices but you need some electronics to do it. Where 485, you can just um, wire it to multiple uh, devices and go with it. Um, if you just want to have a good time and program something up and have it work, RS-232 is definitely the way to go. It's a no-nonsense. You plug it in. Since you have transmit and receive, transmit from here has to go to receive here. So sometimes you need to cross it over with like a null modem adapter so you could just stick that in there and it'll cross the, the pins over. This actually works. RS-485 is a lot more finicky and you can spend a lot of time trying to get the drops to work out and you might need to have pull down or pull up um, resistors on the end of your run. So um, Right now I've got a mix of analog input and output and discrete input and outputs. Right now I have four discrete outputs. I have six discrete inputs, uh, two analog outputs, and uh, there are six analog inputs, but I only have two potentiometers hooked up because I'm cheap. These, these two analog outputs <clears throat> are actually PWM outputs, but for all intents and purposes it works the same. You can have up to four analog outputs. Basically you've got um, two pins in here that are dedicated to transmit and receive for this uh, RS-232 which leaves us, leaves us with 12 general purpose I.O. and they can all 12 of these could be input, discrete in, or discrete out. Um, but four of them you can set up to be PWM output. So, you know, set up a, a mixture of those that you like. I'm in the process of setting up microcontrollers like Arduinos and Netduinos to 
bring all of this uh, data back to an HMI, which is a human machine interface. So you can have a mix of microcontrollers, multiple means of bringing this data back. You can use an XB, Zigbee, um, wireless, wired, IP, serial. You can bring all this data back into a central uh, server, basically, where you can view the data, you can turn things on and off. I'm a, I have a greenhouse to automate, um, lots of other things to monitor. I'm going to go ahead and power this thing up here and uh, do a little demonstration for you. Right now we're looking at a HMI or human machine interface. We've got analog inputs. So let me uh, turn some of these knobs. Turn that one all the way down. We'll turn this one up. So I, I've chosen to have Mango p communicate with this device every three seconds. That's all uh, configurable. The reason that all of these went up is because I've got something on the first two and then the last four are kind of floating. The Arduino doesn't have real robust um, electronics that are they're pulling it down but that's pretty easy to do with some resistors. Let's go ahead and look at my discretes. In fact, I'm going to go turn up the poll rate so this is a better demo. <clears throat> there I turned up the communication rate. You see these blinkies indicates how fast it's uh, communicating. I'm going to show you a few things here. Let's just start turning these on. Notice that uh, as you turn them on, it's uh, showing up on the screen here. I just got an email. The reason I just got an email is because I have it set, number three is set to uh, send me an email whenever it uh, activates. So that's what it looks like. I'll go back to, I'm using Firefox here. Let's do this one. Come on! There we go. Keyboard. I'm going to put a 1. Enter. Notice that it came on. So we can control our discrete outs. And then this is an analog. I've obviously mislabeled that. These are analog outs. So we're going to start with a low value. Let's do like 10. Enter. It barely came on. Let's do uh, 50. Came on a little more. Let's do 200. There it's even brighter. So, Alright, so that was the demonstration. I am going to show you absolutely everything you need to know to build one of these yourself, including the wiring and the programming and uh, what to download. So uh, watch the next video if you want to learn that.